Howdy, folks, and welcome to Learn English with Fairy Tales, a podcast aimed at all levels and all ages learners, both native and non-native speakers, who want to improve their language skills and possibly expand their vocabulary by means of some of the most beautiful stories ever written or told so far. My name is Gaetano del Gaiso. And the story we'll be taking into account for today's episode is a story about a naughty musician and the unlikely companions he meets while taking a walk alone in the woods, in the search of the perfect one to share his marvelous music with. But before we begin, let's take as usual a quick look at the vocabulary and expressions selected for today's episode of Learn English with Fairy Tales. Remember to check the description box of this episode to get access to the full list of them and to the links that will take you to both our social media and to the full transcript of this episode, available, as usual, freely. Let's kick this off. Boring. Boring. It is an adjective meaning not interesting. As in a sentence, it's boring here in the woods. Tune. Tune. It is a noun referring to a melody typical of a piece of music. As in a sentence, he played a tune that sounded through the trees. Desire. Desire. It is a noun referring to a strong feeling of wanting to have something. As in a sentence, I have no desire for his company. Pupil. Pupil. It is a noun referring to a person who's been taught. As in a sentence, I will obey you like a pupil obeys his teacher. Fopo. Fopo. It is a noun referring to either the front pose of an animal. As in a sentence, put your forepaws into the crack. To wedge. To wedge. It is a verb meaning to fix or becoming fixed. As in a sentence, with one blow, he wedged his two paws firmly into the crack. Footpath. Footpath. It is a noun referring to a path for people in the countryside. As in a sentence, they came to a footpath with tall saplings on both sides. To tie. To tie. It is a verb meaning to attach or fasten. As in the sentence, the musician tied his bow to the left stem. To jerk. To jerk. It is a verb meaning to move or cause to move with a sudden movement. As in a sentence, the musician jerked the little fox upward. Fiddle. Fiddle. It is a noun referring to a violin used to play folk music. As in a sentence, he took his fiddle and music sounded through the woods. Clearing. Clearing. It is a noun referring to an open space in a forest. As in the sentence, they came to an aspen tree in a clearing in the woods. To well. To well. It is a verb meaning to give a cry of pain, grief or anger. As in the sentence, he began to wail crying out with all his might. To enrupture. To enrupture. It is a verb 
meaning to give intense pleasure. As in the sentence, the poor man stood there enraptured. Now, without further ado, let's delve deeper into the story. Make sure to sit comfy and have something to sip on whilst listening and enjoy your listening and learning experience with us. Once upon a time, there was a strange musician who was walking through the woods all by himself, thinking about this and that. When there was nothing left for him to think about, he said to himself, It is boring here in the woods. I'm going to get myself a good companion. Then he took his fiddle from his back and played a tune that sounded through the trees. Before long, a wolf came trotting through the thicket toward him. Ah, a wolf is coming, but I have no desire for him, said the musician. But the wolf came nearer and said to him, Oh, dear musician, you play very well. I too would like to learn to play. You can learn quickly, answered the musician. You will only have to do what I tell you. Oh, musician, said the wolf, I will obey you like a pupil obeys his teacher. The musician told him to come along with them and when they had walked some distance together, they came to an old oak tree. It was hollow inside and split up the middle. Look, said the musician, if you want to learn to play the fiddle, put your four paws into this crack. The wolf obeyed, and the musician quickly picked up a stone and with one blow wedged his two paws so firmly that he had to stay lying there like a prisoner. Wait here until I return, said the musician, and went on his way. After a while, he again said to himself, It is boring here in the woods. I will get myself another companion. He took his fiddle and again played into the woods. Before long, a fox came creeping through the trees toward him. Ah, oh, a fox is coming, said the musician. I have no desire for him. The fox came up to him and said, Oh, dear musician, you play very well. I too would like to learn to play. Well, you can learn quickly, said the musician. You will only have to do what I tell you. Oh, musician, answered the fox, I will obey you like a pupil obeys his teacher. Follow me, said the musician. And when they had gone some distance together, they came to a footpath with tall saplings on both sides. There the musician stood still, and from one side he bent a young hazelnut tree down to the ground and put his foot on the end of it. Then he bent down another young tree from the other side and said, now, little fox, if you want to learn something, give me your left front paw. The fox appeared, and the musician tied his paw to the left stem. Little fox, he said, now give me your right paw. He tied this one to the right stem. After making sure that the knots in the cord were tight enough, he let go. The trees sprang upright and jerked the little fox upward, leaving him hanging there, struggling in the air. 
Wait here until I return," said the musician, and went on his way. Once again, he said to himself, "It is boring here in the woods. I will get myself another companion." So he took his fiddle, and music sounded through the woods. Then a little hare came jumping toward him. Ah,、oh, a hare is coming," said the musician. "I do not want him." "Oh, dear musician," said the hare, "you play very well. I too would like to learn to play." "You can learn quickly," said the musician. "You will only have to do what I tell you." Oh, musician," replied the little hare, "I will obey you like a pupil obeys his teacher." When they had gone some distance together, they came to an aspen tree in a clearing in the woods. The musician tied a long string around the little hare's neck, then tied the other end of the string to the tree. Now, quickly, little hare, run twenty times around the tree," shouted the musician, and the little hare obeyed. When he had run around twenty times, he had wound the strings twenty times around the trunk of the tree, and the little hare was caught. The more the hare tugged and pulled, the more the string cut into his tender neck. Wait here until I return," said the musician, and went on his way. The wolf, in the meantime, had pushed and pulled and bitten at the stone, and had worked so long that he freed his feet from the crack. Full of anger and rage, he rushed after the musician, wanted to tear him to pieces. When the fox saw him running by, he began to wail, crying out with all his might, "Brother wolf, come help me! The musician has tricked me!" The wolf pulled down the trees, bit the cord in two, and freed the fox, who went with him to take revenge on the musician. They found the tied-up hare, whom they rescued as well. Then all together they set forth to find their enemy. The musician had played his fiddle once again as he went on his way. This time he had been more fortunate. The sound reached the ears of a poor woodcutter, who instantly, whether he wanted to or not, stopped working and, with his axe under his arm. Came toward the musician to listen to the music. At last, the right companion is coming," said the musician, "for I was seeking a human being, not wild animals." And he began to play so beautifully and delightfully that the poor man stood there in rapture, his heart filled with pleasure. While he was thus standing there, the wolf, the fox, and the hare approached. He saw well that they had evil intentions, so he raised his shining axe and placed himself before the musician, as if to say, "Anyone who wants to harm him, beware, for he will have to deal with me." Then the bees took fright. And ran back into the woods. The musician, however, played one more tune for the man to thank him, and then went on his way. Well, folks, I guess it's everything for today's episode of Learn English with Fairy Tales. We really hope you've enjoyed this episode at least as much as we adored to produce it. If so, please don't forget to support our work by sharing the podcast everywhere and with everybody. Plus, take some time to answer the poll and the questions where available, such as on Spotify. That being said, we'd like to invite you to share some love on our social media. 
You could find all the links in the description box of the episode and renew our appointment for the next episode out in three weeks from today. Thank you from the very bottom of our heart and the seeing you.